welcome to Virtual Pathfinder channel. This video is about interstellar travel near the speed of light. Before we start the interstellar journey, I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel. You can also support the channel on Patreon, where exclusive material is available. There is also merchandise available in Virtual Pathfinder design shop. There's a link to that in the channel description. Now let's get back to space exploration. If interstellar space travel near the speed of light would be possible, we would likely go to the star closest to our solar system. That star is Proxima Centauri, which lies about four light years away from us. Let's make a thought experiment that we have a spacecraft that can travel at 80% of the speed of light. It is a thought experiment, so for simplicity, let's assume instant acceleration and deceleration. According to classical physics, when traveling at 0.8 times the speed of light, it would take the spacecraft five years to reach Proxima Centauri. Intuitively, one would assume an astronaut at the age of 30 would be 35 years old when arriving at some exoplanet in that solar system. Although this appears correct intuitively, it is actually not the case. In 1905, Albert Einstein published a scientific paper about special relativity which introduced the idea that the speed of light is constant in all frames of reference. In other words, the speed of light from a light source is coming at you at the same speed regardless if you are at rest or in motion towards or away from it. As a consequence, time and space coordinates for all events in space will depend on the velocity relative to the observer. As mentioned, a spacecraft leaving Earth with 0.8 times the speed of light will reach Proxima Centauri in about five years from an Earth-based point of view. However, from the point of view of an astronaut on board the spacecraft, it will take shorter time, due to a relativistic effect called time dilation. It can be calculated by performing a Lorentz transformation of coordinates. I will not get into that this time, but what it means is that from a stationary observer's point of view, time moves slower in frames of reference in motion, such as a spacecraft. So, a 30-year-old person working at the ground control center on Earth will be 35 years old when the spacecraft reaches Proxima Centauri. But interestingly, the 30-year-old astronaut will only be 33 years old when arriving at the destination, according to the clocks on board the spacecraft. The astronaut has only traveled for three years. This difference is caused by time dilation. As a side note, the ground control center will not know that the astronaut has arrived at the destination until another four years has passed. Since it takes four years for light or any electromagnetic signal to reach Earth. So the ground control person will be 35 plus 4 years, which is 39 years old, when finding out that the astronaut has reached the destination. Someone may think that this must be inconsistent since the spacecraft is traveling a distance of 4 light years on in only 3 years, which would indicate that the spacecraft velocity is not only inconsistent with the relative motion seen from the ground control on Earth, but it would also be 33% faster than the speed of light. Imagine that. Luckily, there is more to the story. The theory of relativity leads to another relativistic effect called length contraction, which means that objects in motion relative an observer will get shorter in the direction of motion. Therefore, the space between Earth and Proxima Centauri will appear shorter than four light years from the astronaut's point of view, since that space will be in relative motion towards the spacecraft during the trip. At a velocity of 0.8 c, c is the speed of light, the distance will appear to be 0.6 times of 4 light years, which becomes 2.4 light years in distance. In conclusion, from the astronaut's point of view, the distance traveled is 2.4 light years, 
in three years' time. From those observations, the spacecraft velocity can be calculated as 2.4 c divided by 3, which is 0.8 c. That is the velocity, 0.8 times the speed of light, which is consistent with the relative velocity perceived by the Earth ground control. If you found this video interesting, make sure to subscribe to this channel. See you then in the next video. Until then, remember to always aim for the stars.